Hey folks, your OS Reviews. You're watching our retro unboxing and first impressions of the Nokia C6. This was released back in 2010, and it's an unlocked smartphone. One of the reasons why we're checking it out now is because the price has dropped significantly, and you can find it on Amazon or eBay in refurbished or new conditions for under 30 bucks, which means that it's very affordable and still remains a pretty good messaging option in my opinion, because the C6 has a sliding QWERTY keyboard for text entry. It's also a touchscreen smartphone, and it's around the same era as the Nokia uh, 5800 Express Music and the Nokia N97. Uh, if you guys remember, those were kind of iconic Nokia phones, one of their first phones that came out with a touchscreen display. And now that Nokia is coming back in 2017, we thought it'd be fun to take a look at something that was uh, more popular seven years ago. So regardless, it came in two color iterations, white or black. We have the black version here, and obviously this version here is refurbished since it's out of the original packaging. Specs include a 3.2 inch TFT LCD display which is using resistive touchscreen technology and not capacitive unfortunately. There's a 5 megapixel autofocus camera capable of 480p video recording, a 1200 milliamp hour capacity battery, it takes a micro SD card, and it runs on Symbian 9.4 OS 60. Uh, it also has 240 megabytes of storage expandable via a micro SD card, and the processor is under 350 megahertz. Now that might seem ridiculously low here in 2017, but it actually works quite well for Symbian OS, which is very optimized for uh, you know, less power intensive processors back in the day. So most of the common tasks such as messaging, phone calling, light web browsing, watching YouTubes, uh, Nokia Maps for navigation can still be handled without too many problems on the device. So let's take everything out of this refurbished packaging. The first thing that I see is actually a charger. Uh, it's a Nokia charger. It seems like it's a proprietary one that came with a fairly standard looking pen back in the day. It's interesting because I'm pretty sure the C6 also has a micro S USB port. So perhaps you can charge it in two ways. Uh, looks like that the seller of this also uh, included it with a SIM card. This takes a probably nano SIM card and it's an unlocked GSM quad band phone so you can take it anywhere in the world and still use it just by popping in your own SIM which makes it still again a pretty valid backup phone in 2017 if you are consistently traveling or on the go. It also features Bluetooth, the essentials like GPS, in addition to 3G connectivity. So it looks like there's also a 4 gig micro SD card included as a bonus probably. We can just try I guess ripping this open. And there's of course the standard kind of micro SD adapter located on the side. There is the phone itself, we'll take a closer look at in a second. There's the battery, which again features a 1200 milliamp hour capacity, which is sufficient for a phone that's relatively small in terms of footprint and has a smaller display and a smaller processor than a lot of modern day flagships, which means it should still last you for about a day to two days on a single charge. Uses that pretty standard Nokia kind of charging pin system common back in the day. Here's the back cover. and it looks like it's made entirely out of plastic. So the C series for Nokia was kind of their mid-end uh, line instead of being their flagship, which was the N series, such as the N95, uh, you know, N97. So this was meant as more of a budget alternative, but still has all the same features of the N97 since it came out at a later date, which made it a great value even back then if you want a keyboard smartphone. So it's made out of the polycarbonate plastic, has a decent kind of touch to it. You have the logo on the very bottom here, cutouts for the camera and the speaker, and nothing on the other side. Finally, it looks like there is indeed a standard micro USB cable that's come bundled with this refurbished set. So you probably can use that for data transfer and for charging. And it looks like there are headphones as well. So these probably use the standard 3.5 millimeter uh, audio jack, which would be nice. Uh, especially since, again, a lot of newer phones these days don't even have a standard headphone port, which is a little sad. You have to use adapters or Bluetooth headphones, and this is really quite useful if you want to have a nice media player. This is actually the original Nokia headset, it looks like, that came with the C6, and it has a decent cable length, a standard 35 millimeter audio plug, so it makes for a decent media experience. There is the company's logo here, a clip that includes the microphone, Nokia logo, 
and you can use this to answer phone calls or reject phone calls as a click key. You can also play or pause your music. And then the headphones themselves look kind of generic, uh, but at least they work and they are bundled as an extra in the kit, but there's no foam or anything that pads the externals. So, so there's a film protector I'm going to peel back from the display. And that leaves us with a pretty shiny and reflective surface. It's again made out of a plastic material since it's a resistive screen that uses pressure as opposed to the capacitive. But Nokia doesn't include a stylus in the C6, so it mainly relies on your on your fingers for navigation. All right, so let's pop in the battery here. This is where the SIM card slot, it looks like, is located, just vertically. And then you have just the camera lens along with a LED flash, but this is not one that's produced by Carl Zeiss. So not as high quality as the one on the N97, at least on, at least on paper. Uh, and the back cover just snaps into place, it looks like. So that fits decently. We can see that it looks fairly sleek on the back, almost like a point-and-shoot camera. There's a latch that you can pull down to pop off the cover again. And again, it's using polycarbonate plastic for the entire frame. A quick tour around the handset. On the bottom, there is indeed that proprietary Nokia charging port, although you don't necessarily have to use it. You can just opt for micro USB, which is a better choice in my opinion. There's a lanyard strap, and on the other side you have access to what looks like a camera shutter key. There's a two-stage key to launch the camera and take an image, a lock key for the touchscreen, a dedicated volume rocker. The top here features a port that covers up the micro USB port for, again, charging and syncing, full-size 3.5mm headphone jack, and nothing on the other side except for a hot swappable micro SD card slot, which again is quite useful. I'm just going to pop this in right now since the phone has virtually no built-in memory. If you want to take images or download more programs, etc., this will probably be a must. Uh, so it's nice that this extra came included with this refurbished model. So that's it. Um, let's try powering it on and see if there's any power. Almost immediately, you can see that there's a layer of fingerprints since removing the film, uh, since this seems like a very reflective and shiny handset. So footprint uh, almost seems entirely the same as Nokia N97 from my memories. Uh, 3.2 inches, believe it or not, was the norm for a touchscreen smartphone about seven years ago. What's interesting about the C7 is hardware is also pretty fully featured because there's also a front-facing camera that you can use to uh, for Skype, WeChat, video chatting, and selfies, along with a small ambient light sensor. There's a earpiece as well, and you can see that below the display we have access to talk and end keys and a home key that dubs as a uh, kind of a program key that takes into the traditional Symbian UI interface. And finally, of course, what's interesting about the C6 is that keyboard. Sliding it open, it has a satisfying click, and it actually looks like a pretty sleek and modern keyboard with backlighting. You can see that it makes it easier to type in in the dark. There's a directional pad located on the right, which some people will like for gaming and uh, for emulation purposes, but uh, perhaps not the best use if you just want to type uh, longer messages since that means the keyboard size is physically smaller. Also, a little bit odd choice is that there's a line running through the middle, which some people will think is a little strange as far as the layout is concerned, but I think that uh, it makes the device definitely look different and it reminds me of some E-series communicators from Nokia back in the day, so I think it looks pretty good. There's a textured finish to it that's soft touch and uh, kind of matte, which uh, feels pretty nice in terms of the firmness and the clickiness of the keys, which are tactile and fairly risen above the surface. There's kind of chrome etching on the sides, which are made out of plastic, and the back here is partially made out of aluminum and metal, partially made out of plastic on the edge, so certainly a very interesting kind of build. And uh, this is what it looks like. Nowhere near s slim as uh, modern day smartphones, but of course having this keyboard means that it's quite versatile. And it's spring assisted, which means that it clicks open with a satisfying thump. There's also an accelerometer in here for tilting the display in certain programs. And you can see that this is a pretty traditional kind of Symbian layout as far as uh, most things are concerned for navigating around. Uh, actually, the resistive screen on first impression actually seems quite responsive. I'm not having to exert too much force and it still seems to work. Uh, you have kind of these standard social media networking apps. Uh, again, you can turn on Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth in the settings. Uh, if we just take a quick look at the camera to see it works, it should launch in a few seconds and 
uh, give us the ability to instantly take an image. And of course, the keys and controls here are also nicely spaced apart uh, with larger icons than a lot of phones back in the day, which were tiny, like on Windows Mobile. So actually, still seems quite reasonable in many ways. Let's see the lock key on the side here, turns it off. And if I tap on the power key again, we have this interesting swipe to unlock feature. So that's pretty cool as well. So anyways, that's just been a first look and retro unboxing of the Nokia C6, uh, a relatively mid-tier Nokia phone, but it's nicely representative of uh, what Nokia's vision was, uh, again, seven years ago. As the company kind of uh, regains media attention heading into 2017, I thought it'd be fun to pick up one of these devices and see if it's still a usable phone uh, here in 2017, especially as a backup or a travel device. And first impressions actually seem pretty positive for a unlocked $30 product. So you can check out more details in our upcoming retro and throwback review, but for now this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This was a look back of the Nokia C6.